Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on DarkSec. I am Dark. Today we're going to talk about Metasploit. Now, this is just going to be a quick introduction to teach you the core bits that you need to know. Uh, for more, I, I have a couple activities that I'll recommend further on into this video, but without further ado, let's go ahead and dig right in. So, what is Metasploit? Metasploit uh, was created by Rapid7. Uh, there's some really awesome folks over there. It is an open source exploitation framework. Uh, what does that mean? So it is essentially just a framework that if you have something, say you have an exploit that you discover, uh, maybe you find something in uh, uh, an engine like Joomla, and that exploit, you want to make it so that it's reusable for a lot of people really, really easily. Metasploit offers the uh, ability for you to package that up using a predictable code format. Uh, it's built in Ruby which is very, very easy to learn, so that um, you can add it, uh, you submit it to the Metasploit uh, GitHub, and uh, they will review that and make sure that it's up to their standards, and then they will add it into the actual Metasploit itself. Once that's all done, uh, once it's all merged in, that becomes publicly available so that anyone that has Metasploit installed or anyone that's using Kali that's up to date will be able to use your exploit. So. Really cool, makes for a really cl uh, fast uh, deployment. Um, and even then you can make your own custom uh, modules. They don't have to be added to the public Metasploit um, GitHub page or GitHub repository rather. You can make your own exploits. Uh, so for example, you wanna make a scanner or something like that. It makes it pretty easy. There are two versions available. There's a free version and then there's also a professional version. For the sake of this video and for the sake of all the exercises that I created around Metasploit, we're going to be sticking to the free version, however, it's useful to know that there are paid versions of it available should you be inclined. So let's talk about core components. Um, Metasploit is made up of a bunch of different modules. Um, here we can see that uh, there are libraries, some interfaces. Um, so for example, there's Armitage, which you've probably seen in Kali if you've turned that on. That is the GUI. I believe it's unofficial, but it's a GUI for Metasploit that allows you to essentially just keep track of hosts and keep track of what different exploits that you've tried against them and if they were successful, but with the GUI. Uh, not as many people use it, but it's pretty cool. Um, the most important thing that we're going to see is actually here at the bottom, which are the modules. I go a little bit more in depth uh, about these in the actual TriHackMe room. However, it's important to know that you have the exploit modules, which are your actual exploitation code. You have your payload modules, which are the various different payload payloads rather that you can send with your exploit so for example if you want a uh, reverse connection that's tcp or udp or you want it to be over web protocols like https you can change that here with your payloads say for example you want to use the interpreter shell which is the custom shell that comes with metasploit and it's really one of the most popular features uh, or just a basic reverse shell you can change that there there's encoding nops or uh, and the not modules those are more for exploit development and a little bit more of uh, doing buffer overflows and things like that. Uh, for the sake of just basic introductory things, you don't really need to know about those. And then there's auxiliary modules um, along with post modules. So auxiliary modules, those are scanners. So for example, if you think that a machine is vulnerable to something, you can confirm it, or confirm it using the scanner, uh, which is an auxiliary module. A good example is if you have a... Uh, SSH username and password, you can chuck it into an SSH login scanner and it'll say, hey, these hosts are vulnerable. You can log in with that uh, credential set. Then the post module set, uh, that is for once you've already compromised a host, you can take those uh, various modules and do like post enumeration. For example, if you want to do privilege escalation to get from a basic user to an elevated user, you can do that with the post modules. Um, additionally, you can do gathering, so like looting and things like that. So if you have a Firefox instance that's installed there, you can try to get the passwords from that and other things like that. All right, uh, some of the base commands, these are the only four commands that you really need to know how to use other than the command you actually start Metasploit. The first one is the help command. Typing that will bring up the basic help menu. You can it, they, it will provide you context, and we'll see that here in a little bit that you can use to get other help. There's the search command, which you use to find different modules. There's the use command, which you use to select the module that you want to use. 
and then set, which is how you set variables. So for example, your target, you set your the operating system of your target if you need to, or different versions and things like that. Additionally, I mentioned this a couple times before in the video, there is a much more in-depth tutorial along with a full guide video for the room on TryHackMe. Uh, you can check this out and I will put the link to this in the video description below. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into a quick tour of Metasploit and a demo of how to use it. All right, and we're back. We're gonna go ahead and continue with our tour of Metasploit. So here we can see I've got TryHack Me Up. I'm gonna be using my room blue as my demo room here just because this has a great Metasploit module for it. Let's go ahead and hop back over to the terminal. Now here we can see I've just got a basic Kali terminal open and we can launch Metasploit with the command MSF console. We'll give it just a moment. This is just spinning up the connections with the database. Here we can see that it's starting the Metasploit framework. Now, if you're curious about how to use the database, I would recommend taking a look again at that room. I go a little bit more in depth in how to utilize that. So here we can see we're greeted with the Metasploit prompt and I'll clear the screen, make that a little bit bigger. So we have the Metasploit prompt. Uh, we can go ahead and type help and we'll see that we're given a pretty extensive help menu. Now, the cool thing about this, this uh, is dynamically populated with what modules you have loaded. You can load in more custom things and more parts of Metasploit as you go. So here we can see we just have the core commands and it makes it nice and easy. Let's go ahead and jump back down. And this is just a Tmux uh, session that I'm running this all in. Let's go ahead and search for eternal blue. There we go. So now we have a neat little trick in Metasploit that we can use. So we can type use and then I want number two here. Again, I'm looking at the number here. Uh, you can do that instead of typing out this full uh, string here. It makes it a little bit faster. So here we can see that we've got that all pulled up. And we can see that it's given us a default payload. So it's a Windows 64-bit interpreter with a reverse TCP. This should be just fine for our purposes. So let's go ahead and check out what options have already been set for us. So here we can see we need to set, looks like just one thing. So we can see the required column here that will set our host. Our host is just gonna be the target that we're running this against. So we'll uh, say use, and then I'm gonna paste in the target IP here. And then we'll also have to change our L host here because this is not on our, uh, for the sake of the try and hack me, or using a machine on try hack me, this is not on the try hack me network, so it won't actually be able to route back to it. We need to change it to our ton zero IP here. So we'll say uh, sent L host 10, eight, four, three. However, we can actually make this even easier. We'll set L host to the interface and it will actually automatically pick up whatever this IP is. And I think we're good to run this. So we'll go ahead and do, you can either do run or exploit here Oh, hold on. I need to set our host. That is not correct. Set our host, and then we'll paste that in. There we go. Now we can run it. So we'll give this just a moment, and we can see that it's going ahead and completing. And we've set a couple variables on this, so nice and easy peasy. This can take a couple tries to complete this exploit, but shows us a pretty basic usage of Metasploit. And there we go. There is our completed exploit. Sometimes you have to press enter at the end of this to actually have it return to the interpreter prompt. But here we can see if we type in hum, or er, hold on, shell, and then who am I? We can see that we've completed our basic exploit here and we've already got NT uh, system authority on this system. Otherwise, that's about going to do it today for this quick demo and overview of Metasploit. Again, I would recommend checking out my full room and then the full video uh, companion. Uh, guide video rather to uh, the Metasploit room on try hack me check out the link below that is a hundred percent free minus that video I think you have to be subscribed in order to get that but otherwise that's going to do it for me today I will see you guys next time and happy hacking